Roxo Media House. Jeff Wilson started covering the Texas Rangers in 2008, though he'll never forget 2021. Out on his own, he decided it was time to do a podcast, but his wheels were spinning until a nerd came along. There's no going back now. Welcome to the Texas Rangers Baseball Podcast. Here's your host, Jeff Wilson, and the recliner nerd himself, John Moore. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast. This is episode number 70. 70. 70. And wow. today, Texas Rangers Hall of Famer and the new assistant to the general manager, Ian Kinsler, is going to join us here in a little bit. Uh, but first, we got to talk about big league stuff. And I figure, you know, you 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 made a run at roster uh, on your oh, thing yeah. Uh, yeah. on that, which was a lot of fun. But maybe we talk about like, maybe a little preview because yeah, you're a little flying out training. to spring training. Tuesday. Yes, sir. Uh, that's Valentine's Day. Uh, not making a lot of friends at home, but uh, <laughs> it's not the first Valentine's Day I've ever missed covering this team. But okay. uh, yeah, you know, so it, it, it is going to be, it's my favorite time of the year. I, I, I love spring training. Uh, a lot of it is rooted in that when I was growing up in Colorado, we didn't have the Rockies. The Rockies weren't in existence yet. Right. Um, and so uh, the, the 1984 season, we had WGN. And uh, WTBS, and uh, I think we had WR too. So you were uh, getting Cubs and uh, Cubs, Mets, and Braves, right? And uh, <clears throat> you know that was the, that was the year the Cubs made their run to the division title and lost to the Padres in five games in the championship series. Um, but we were we became Cubs fans. I loved Rick Sutcliffe. You and my, Kathy will love my, each other. My uh, my sister had a crush on Ryan Sandberg. So and, did my wife. And so uh, it was. It was a great time. And and so, you know, spring break the next year, Colorado, we're tired of the snow. So we went to Arizona uh, and, and we went, that was fourth grade. We went through, we went through my senior year of high school every year. Uh, just great times, great memories. And, you know, when I, when I show up to, to Arizona for spring training, it, it brings back a lot of memories, but uh, you know, the, but among the things I remember is, you know, the players are accessible. Yeah. Uh, it's a relaxed <clears throat> environment. You know, you get to learn about, prospects and stuff like that so uh so so spring training is always going to have a place in my heart and um but from a work perspective the same things apply right uh you know, players are accessible they're relaxed for the most part early on uh you know it, it tightens up a little bit that last week after the prospects have moved been moved out and it's like all right you know these are the guys who are going to make the team or not make the team and right uh you know it's, but it's still just a, a great time. The weather, the weather is, is very nice. It, it is chilly in the mornings until mm-hmm. about mid March. Um, and, and, but it's just, uh, it's just, if you're a baseball fan and you, you, you want access, this is where to get, this, this is the, this is the trip to take. I mean, and, you know, it's fun to go to like Fenway park and, and see Fenway and do a little tour, maybe hit, hit Yankee stadium or chase or not chase city yeah. city field. Um, you know, do something like that, but you, you just don't get the access and, and right. a, and it's very expensive, uh, here it's not as expensive. Uh, you can drive to Arizona really. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just a great time. And so I, uh, that, that's me waxing poetically about spring training. And now, as far as the Rangers are concerned, what I wrote the other day when I did my first roster projection is that you really pretty much know 80% of the roster. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it maybe even a little more. I'm not any good at math, but uh, I think there's probably 20 of the spots decided out of the 26 available. And then I think there are some, you know, that you know, you know the names and the possibilities. Uh, you know, I do think Bubba Thompson has made the team. I, I think that uh, with left field the way it is, uh, with his ability to play center field, and with uh, the the new the new base stealing rules and the new, you know, shorter distance between the bases. I just, I don't see how we can't make the team. Right. Um, unless he's hurt or just what's the bed and in, in, in spring training, which unfortunately, you know, I guess it's a possibility. That's reality. Yeah, that can happen. But I, I really think that there's, there's something there that they can take advantage of. And, you know, um, but uh, so the, 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 so like the openings are left field, right? There's some bullpen spots available and then, you know, the bench. And those are things that we all write about at the end of the year. Like the biggest story of the spring is, you know, who, you know, not the biggest story, but it's like, who's going to, who's going to be on the bench you know? right? And this year? Who's going to be the left field platoon? Who's, who's got a shot at the bullpen and the bullpen's pretty interesting uh, because, you know, they could turn, they could convert a couple starters into relievers uh, depending on how they feel about their depth at triple a, 
there are a couple non-roster guys. I, I really think Kyle Cody's going to make the team. Yeah. I think Lucas uh, Jacobson has a chance to make the team. Um, so Ian Kennedy was signed. Ian Kennedy was signed. You know, he had a, he he's had got a minor a, league deal, but yeah, he had a, a velocity drop off at the end of last year. So that's gotta be, gotta be fixed. But, uh, and, you know, and he's got ties to Chris Young, obviously, and, and Dayton Moore, who's now an assistant to, to Young. So, uh, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see for sure, you know, but, um, it really, it, you know, it's like, oh, what's the mystery here? You know, they're awesome. It's not like they're changing over 20 of 26 spots or really no. only changing over a few. Right. And, and, and well, the, the biggest change in all of this offseason is the starting rotation. Right, right. And that's what we're all excited to see. And I can't stress this enough, guys, that, that if, you, if you are a Ranger fan that wants to get close and meet some of these players or, or even just close enough to get some great photos of them right there, spring training is so fun. Yeah. And this year we got a sponsor. Yeah, that's right. We do. Premier Properties. Um, I've got ties with Premier Properties, but they're a company that, that I work for. I know I, I don't talk much about what my day job is. Yeah. But we're going to do a little commercial about that, but they are going to be the official sponsor of this show for spring training. Yeah, that's great. And they're going to be on the website too. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's it's somewhere. I, I am not a salesman. I am a sports writer, writer. slash copy editor. And, uh, selling is not in my blood, but uh, it's about to be because, you know, I think there's an opportunity here for the show. And so if it, I really do, you know, but it, premier sponsor stepping up to pre- premier property, stepping up to the plate as the first sponsor is just awesome. And it's and the it, first one. Yeah. It gives you, a, it gives you a, a jolt, gives you some hope that there's more down the, the road. But uh, this one, John, I mean, you know, I, I know that, you know, just without getting into it, you invest in, in real estate and that's something that, that a lot of people want to do. It's what my, it's what Mrs. Wilson, that's her dream. That's what she wants to do. And <laughs> I think uh, HGTV helps a lot of people want well, to do that. But you know, it, it really is. Uh, but if you're going to do that, so yeah. let, let me explain what Premier real quick. Well, they're, they're paying, so we might as yeah, well what explain hell? what they're doing. So um, uh, first of all, I'm a full blown real estate agent. My day job, Jeff does this full time. He is a full time writer. I am not a full time writer. This is, I do this on the side. I do this on, this is my fun gig on the yeah, side and, yeah. you know, and all of that. But um, I do real estate. I invest in real estate, but I work with Premier Properties and they manage all my properties. So any of all of us remember when you lived in an apartment, um, you had an apartment manager and you would go to that little office at the front oh, yeah. for repairs or call and do all of that. Well, people would invest in real estate and you have multiple single family homes, duplexes or whatever you got. Sure. Well, you don't have on-site managers for a home or whatever. Yeah. That's what Premier Properties does. Uh, they they take they put the buffer between you and your and your uh, tenant, and so we're the person they call when there's repairs. We're the ones at 24 hours a day. Uh-huh. If there's an emergency, they're calling us, and then you know we collect all the money if they don't. And, let me, and the best part about being with Premier Properties, they manage all of my property. That's awesome. And uh, the best part about them, they don't get paid unless they get paid. Uh-huh. So they charge a fee to manage a property, but they take it out once they collect rent. So when people aren't paying rent, they have an incentive to go collect <laughs> yeah, the rent. There you go. So that's what they are. But we'll get more into yeah, Premier yeah, Properties. Yeah. They're going to be yeah. on, you're going to hear about them from now to the end of March. Yeah. You're going to be hearing about yeah. Premier Properties. But I want to get back to, I, I had to throw that in because it just dawned on me. We hadn't talked about them yet because they are going to sponsor spring training. And guys, spring training is going to be huge. Yeah. And and so, but the with the rotation being new, I think everyone's so excited to see what's going to happen with the rotation and watch these guys. And, you know, we're all crossing our fingers. I mean, a history dictates that maybe one of these guys starts on the IL just going into the season from something small or yeah, stupid sure, or sure. an ankle turn at the end or something. And right. it, But but hopefully this thing starts off with everyone in that rotation. And you know what? You had an interesting thing. I've been saying this all along, and you put this in your deal. Opening day starter, I think, is Martin Perez. Yeah. He deserves it. Sure. But I thought this, I'm, I always think business too. Opening day always sells out. You got Martin Perez who deserves it. That next game, it's going to sell out too because Jacob DeGrom's yeah. going to no, be No, that's a good up. point. Too. That's what I say. No, and I'm telling you, that's part of it too. <laughs> and and, and but, it, it's not that DeGrom isn't your ace. It's that Martin Perez deserves to get that opening sure. game start for sure. what he did for this team last yeah. year. And then, you know, and there are they are going to have to manipulate the rotation a little bit to set it up so that, so that, uh, the Phillies the first weekend don't face DeGrom, Valdi, and John Gray, three hard throwing right handers of sure. power stuff, you know, by the there, you don't want them to get into a comfort zone. And if they have platoon players, you don't want their platoon players to get comfortable. So, exactly. you know, you're going to try to, you know, try to keep 
a lefty in the mix at some point so that he's so that so that the righties aren't back to back to back. And right. so, you know, it, it it's you know, it was a fun exercise. I like going through that stuff and trying to think things through. And um, you know, the bullpen's gonna be interesting, like I said, because you know, Bruce Bochy had you know, he knows how to run a bullpen. Man, man he does. And uh, you know, what's he gonna want? And I know the rules have changed since he managed, you know, you have the three batter minimum, but nevertheless, you're still gonna be able to have a there's still a spot for a lefty to get one out, you know. Yep. You know, two outs in the in the eighth. You need one out, bring in a lefty, he's done, bring in somebody else for the night. So it, it it'll be Yeah, it'll Bryce be, Harper, that opening series is hitting pretty, at the, with two outs. Well, I yeah. think he's hurt, right? He's not gonna be hitting. Is he? Well, anyway, but okay, I know it, what you're saying. Okay. Point taken. And yep. uh um so anyway, um spring training is where it all is hashed out. You know, and early, early on, it's, you know, guys aren't doing much. The results don't matter as much with starters. The guys, you know, are in the rotation. They might pitch to like a 12 ERA, but they're just getting their, their locations down, the feel for their pitches. Everything's going to be okay. Uh, you know, my first year on the beat, Zach Greinke with the Royals had a horrible spring. Yeah. And then uh, his last tune up was at, at uh, Frisco. It was the, the Rangers had a two game series there. And he came out and just shoved for seven innings. And really it was like all right he's ready so i mean it, it, it's it, that's they just know what they're doing so don't worry about the starting pitchers don't don't look at era yeah. don't look exactly. at somebody gives exactly. up five and, uh, i mean there's I, i've heard stories of this all the time where someone will go out and just go throw nothing but fastballs this inning i just need yeah, i need yeah, to locate yeah. my fastball and i'm not yeah. breaking anything off and people will tee it up and get yeah. on it but yeah. he's not upset he's like i'm trying to locate this that's what yeah. i just need my fastball where i need right. it to go right so that that's going to be fun but um Anything else before we get Ian going in here? No, uh, you know it's uh, it's time to get going. I'm, I'm I'm tired of making stuff up and not having a lot of news to write. Spring training is just full of it. Every day you can find something, and it will find you too. Hey, if you're going to go to spring training, March 8th through March 13th, the crew's going to be there, and we're going to be filming. We're going to be and, and Joel, our producer, and I is going to be walking around. We're going to be getting film and doing all of that. So you guys come up and say hi. Jeff will be around there too, going everywhere and, and doing that. But uh, once again, thanks to Premier Properties for for, for sponsoring spring yeah. training and doing that. And uh, go to SWDallasRealty.com, SW, like Southwest, DallasRealty.com. Go on that website. You can see everything they need to do. Right now, after this, let's come back and let's talk to Texas Ranger Hall of Famer and yeah. special yeah, assistant to the general manager, Ian, Ian Kinsler, right after this, guys. And joining us right now is Texas Rangers Hall of Famer and new special assistant to the general manager, Ian Kinsler, is joining us. Hey, Ian, thanks for coming on, man. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. Hey, what's in that room? What's in that background behind you? Looks. <laughs> oh, we got all cool kinds stuff. of stuff back here. We got. Uh, we got some Michael Young shoes. Oh, okay. So you know him? <laughs> we got. Uh, is that Eric Hosmer bat right here? All right. All right. Oh, this, this is a good one. We got Al, Al Kalon. Oh, oh, very good. Wow. Very good. That's good. And so on. Miggy and Francisco Lindor. Al, you know. Is that your office? Uh, no, this is like the, like a game room kind of pool table and stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Sweet. All right. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, you've got, I mean, you know, you think about it, you play for the Rangers, all the, Great players there. Yeah. Tigers, great players. I think I think a lot of people forget the Angels and the Red Sox, so they shouldn't. And then they won a World Series. And with the Padres. So <laughs> I, mean, I can only imagine the stuff you could possibly have. But Al Kaline, that's sweet. No, man. no, that's that's that's, that's the one's better. So uh yeah, you got a new job. Yes. <laughs> how did how did it all come about? Uh, um you know me. Just, just in my mind, you know, I think being a Texas Ranger was probably the only other place to be besides San Diego. I liked working with AJ. I liked working with the team there. Um, obviously had a good thing going, but Texas was home for me. It's 
It's always been that way. And, um, you know, this is where I'm most comfortable. This is what I know best. And, and this is what I'm connected to the most. So, uh, the Rangers was, was always in, you know, the front of my mind, but, um, you know, see why I got hired and be able to talk to him a little bit about, uh, the possibility. Um, and then discussing with AJ about the possibility and, and getting his take on it, you know, it, it all kind of ca- came together, um, you know, over time and a lot of discussions and, and uh, I'm I'm grateful that it happened. I mean, was, was a trade struck? Does Does Chris Young have to buy AJ dinner or, or anything <laughs> like that? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know what what uh, what went down there with their conversations, but um, I probably have to buy AJ some dinner when I get to Arizona. <laughs> I know that. Uh, so, but but we'll get back to to your new job in a second. You also have a, a more pressing job, and that's managing Tim Isra- team Israel in the, the world baseball classic. Uh, what, what, what do you like about that, that opportunity? I know, I know you, you, this isn't your first go around with them and you played for them in the Olympics. What, what, what has that whole thing been like for you? It, it's been a crazy experience. I think, you know, when I retired in 2019 there, it wasn't on my map to play for team Israel. I wasn't thinking about really playing at all. Uh, and Team Israel qualified for the Olympics. They won the European Championship, so I got a call from the general manager, Peter Kurtz, asking me if I wanted to play in the Olympics. Um, you know, and he and all I knew was the WBC, International Baseball, at that time. Yeah. Um, yeah. You you rarely think of baseball in the Olympics. It you know it happens every once in a while, but uh, when you get that opportunity, right away I jumped at it and. And later learning that I had to go to Israel and, and get my citizenship, become an Israeli <laughs> citizen to oh, play. Wow. Um, so that took me on like a whole nother path. And, you know, I went to, I went to Israel with my wife and experienced Jerusalem, experienced Tel Aviv and, and, and you know, all the history and all the information um, and just getting more connected to my heritage, my dad's side of the family. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a lot of fun and it's been eye opening and it's just been a great experience. And then, you know, after the Olympics, uh, developing those relationships, they asked me if I wanted to manage the WBC. And, you know, it seemed like a great opportunity at the time and, and a good way to get my feet wet and see what managing is all about and, and kind of go from there. Yeah. It seemed like, uh, you guys got a tough draw in the WBC. <laughs> Just you think? Miami. Huh? <laughs> he goes, you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a little tough. Um, but how far how far has Israeli baseball come to, to get to this point? It's come a long way. I think 2000... What was the, what was the WBC before the 2017 one? Uh, it would have been three. So it would have been four, 14? 13. Or 13. 13, yeah. 13, I think. So 13, they they tried to qualify for the WBC and failed. Um, and then they qualified. I don't know how they qualified for 2017. I, I think they had to play through a qualifying tournament to qualify for the, the WBC, similar to like the Czech did this year. Uh-huh. Um, and they, they played it extremely well. And I think that kind of brought to light Israel baseball. Uh, they... They played hard. They had fun. Um, they played with energy. They, they started in Korea, won or finished second in that pool, I believe, and then moved on to Japan and, and lost to the Netherlands um, to move to, to L.A. Uh, so they finished sixth in, in the tournament in 2017, which qualified them automatically for this okay. coming WBC. And since then... There's been a baseball field built built in, in Bet Shemesh in Israel with lights and turf and batting cages and, you know, a little baby locker room and, and all kinds of cool stuff for the kids and, and the development of baseball players in Israel. And that's that's really been the whole connection for me. It's like yeah. bringing, bringing the sport to another country um, and developing it there, I think, is, is super rewarding. So. You know, it's come a long way. I think there's still still a long way to go, but um, 
there are some young players that are, are that are pretty good that are coming up and, and it should be interesting to watch. Well, and now, you know, they have an in with a major league franchise. You know, you get get some of these guys signed. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. You can scout them too. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, bar, bar, barring you guys advancing, which uh, you know can't rule it out. Uh, you think you'll be to Rangers camp probably for the first time in late, late toward the end there in March. Say that again. Be Rangers what? You'll be at Rangers camp for the first time in late March, probably. Oh, Rangers camp. Yes. Yeah. I'll probably when when the W. BCNs, I'll probably take a couple of days at home and then uh, head out to spring training for a week or a little over a week and just get acclimated with everything. And the way that, that Boach is running things and the way that CY is running things and, um, you know, the minor leagues, the, the coordinator, and just try to, you know, get my feet wet and get connected and, and um, you know, find, find out what's going on, really. I, I mean, do you have any – pet projects in mind, any players you, you want to work with or, or, cause I know, I, I think you went out to Frisco last year, I, I, not in a official capacity. I think it was one of their uh, throwback Thursdays or Thursday Thursdays or whatever, but uh, you know, how, how familiar are, are you with the farm system and what, what's potentially at Frisco? I'm not, I'm not familiar at all yet. Uh, I got the list of minor league prospects yesterday, kind of looking over those. Um, and, and spring training will tell a lot. I think it's pretty easy to see. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they'll, they'll be, they'll be organizational favorites whose name will get thrown around pretty frequently. And you kind of are able to, to, you know, watch from there and, and see what is in the minor league system. I think right now, correct me if I'm wrong, wrong I think they're ranked seventh in, in uh, baseball in the minor league system. So yeah, they have some really good players, some really interesting players. Uh, I know on the mound, they're pretty good. So. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to get uh, to get to know these guys and and hopefully help them along their way. So, so what have you learned about this side of the business? That as a player, you're like, man, that I hate that, I hate that, and now you're like, well, this might be kind of I can kind of see why they do this. You know, the front office versus the the player situ- scenario. How how is it? How do you how do you view it now? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just way different than being a player as a player your mentality is to win every game. I mean, the bottom line is you're going to do whatever it takes to win that day. Um, and when you are in the front office, you just have a, a your, your view is not so narrow. You try to understand the future a little bit. You try to predict the future a little bit. Um, you try to give, you know, players extra chances. And as a player, you're not, you're not okay with that. You know, you want to, you're not ready to develop players. You're ready to win every day. Um, If a guy's not, you know, not holding up their end of the bargain as a player, you're ready to move on quickly Uh, as a front office um, or eyes, I guess you just, you you just see a broader picture. Well, I I get, you know, I guess the, the big deal last summer was the Juan Soto trade and, and, I, you know, the Padres gave up a lot. Yeah, they that was a big trade. I mean, so, I mean, what, take it. What were your emotions? Was it hard to do the trade, or were you like, "Holy cow, this, yeah, this is one soda. This is once in a lifetime." Well, for me, the guys that they traded uh, for Juan Soto were part of my responsibility list. Sure. So yeah. I was I was paying attention to a lot of those prospects. Basically, all of them except for one, Jackson Merrill, who's still in the system. Um, all got traded. So for me, you know, the second half of the of the summer was pretty empty. I mean, Jackson, I think, hit 320 in A ball, so there wasn't a lot to do. He just kind of let him play. Um, there's not a lot of development going on there, and, and we've had our conversations, but um, all the guys got traded. And I think any any time you get a chance to to get or to acquire a bona fide all-star a superstar really like like the grown mm-hmm. um you take the chance and you go for it because it just doesn't happen very often you, you those types of players don't come available very often and if you if you can somehow uh as a free agent persuade a guy to, to come to your organization and or as a trade have enough pieces to acquire that guy in my opinion 
it, it's really hard to say no to that. Um, and that's, that's the other, you know, I think that kind of leads a little bit more to the player's perspective. You know, front office might look at the salary and how long they have and how much are we going to end up paying them? Are we going to be able to pay him in free agency or before he gets the free agency, we're right. going to be able to extend them. All of these different questions that go into play. But for me, uh, a superstar player, it, I, my mind automatically just turns to uh, more of a player perspective. Like right. this, you got to acquire this guy. If you yeah. have a chance to acquire him, um, I think you take a shot every time. Well, and that you know, right right now at my website, Rangers Today, uh, TR is writing a kind of car- chronicling the the John Daniels era, and and he just you know part three or part two is the Cliff Lee is part three the yeah. Cliff Lee trade, and and what a difference that was and how that how that really changed the trajectory not just of your 2010 season but it kind of like it made you guys it made you guys legit you know and, and yeah well, so. I, re- I remember it very well. What do you, what do you remember? Because I wasn't in the clubhouse and when Wash broke the news, but as the news was breaking, as we were hearing it, I remember being in the clubhouse. What 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 was that like? Well, at the time, I don't think like there was there was you know Twitter wasn't a popular thing, Instagram wasn't you know right. a, cr- a crazy thing. I don't think MLB trade rumors was as in depth as they are now. Um, so there was like a, there was like an envelope of paper that gets put on the desk every day and it gives you all the news from the day before. So every day we would go in and like, what's going on with the Rangers? Yeah. Uh, who are we looking at? Who, what are possibilities? And obviously Cliff Lee was a possibility. Um, you know, amongst the players at that time, we were in first place. We were feeling good. We had a good, you know, we were making a good run at it to acquire a guy like cliff was just super exciting. It just, it's just like a shot in the arm, really. I mean, it's the middle of the summer. Um, you're playing good baseball and to acquire somebody that, that can potentially put you over the top is just huge. So it just kind of changes the whole energy of everything and you get super excited. It's, it, it, that was, that was a good moment, uh, in Rangers history for sure. Yeah. I, I, you know, and then, he was okay in the, in the regular season. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't like lights out, but, um, man, that playoff man, in the yeah. playoffs, he well, was, well, game, game five when, you know, he, he pitched so well and you hit that big homer in the ninth to kind of seal the deal. And then, and then the, the game he pitched in the, the division series was just, yeah, just lights out. I, mean, it's, I, I just, I just, you know, he didn't resign and that's fine, but well, wash is the one that broke it to you, right? I believe so, but I believe everyone kind of knew. Okay. okay. I was wondering if he came in and dropped an F-bomb. And we, I'm sure he did. We mother F and God. Well, he definitely, definitely did that. <laughs> <laughs> you still, how often are you still talking to, to Wash, or do you run into him or whatever? I don't talk to Wash much since I've stopped playing, honestly. I think when, you know, when, I was, when I was playing, I would see him every once in a while as an opponent, so we'd be able to catch up and stuff. But he's so locked in on what he's doing and – getting the guys in Atlanta better and, you know, getting on the field and working and doing all the stuff that Wash does. Um, so we, we haven't talked much since I retired, honestly. A, a, a conversation with him is like the highlight of anybody's day. Oh. It, it, I, like if, if we're talking, he really helps out with do it for dirt. It just, it just brightens my day. And then he just talks, he just talks, you know, what's <laughs> going on. And in the wash way, it's unbelievable. And, and, and yeah. hang up and I'm like, my day has been made. Yeah, it really yeah. yeah. So, uh, look, uh, the, the way we do it here is I kind of ask some baseball questions and then John will ask some more, uh, you know, get to know Ian Kinsler stuff. Not that people don't know you. And then yeah. I'll, I'll interject and interfere, but I'll start. Sorry, John, uh, with the war stick hat that you've got on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how is, uh, how is, uh, the baseball bat business? It's going well. It's going really well. Uh, Henry's got one, right? Henry has one. Yeah. My yeah. son has one. You know, it started out as a as a wood bat only company, and now we've you know moved. We have softball bats and pickleball rackets, and <laughs> you know uh, four different uh, alloy bats to choose from for for kids and uh, lacrosse sticks and surfboards wow. and all you know apparel, all kinds of stuff. So it's it, it's been going really well. It's it's a lot of fun, and you know I didn't know 
the market for aluminum bats or alloy bats or whatever, but I've learned a lot about them. Yeah. And you know, we're, we're doing well. We just, we just released uh, our new bat, a new bat that just came out for us. And there's these guys on the internet. They're called the baseball bat bros. Okay. And they, and they test all the bats and they rank them and they pretty much run the whole market. Like whatever these guys say is gold. All the kids listen to these, these guys and they, they just put our bat third. So our new bat. So that's like exceptional um, for us. And we're really, we're really excited about it. And, you know, the next stop really for us is, is, I think softball is trying to get into the softball market and giving the girls something that's really cool and something that they enjoy swinging, something that, you know, obviously works well. Um, But it's been, it's been fun to be a part of. What's the name of the new bat? Because I know all your bats have have names. Yeah, it's called a bone saber. Okay. Bone saber. That's cool. I I knew the bone saber. Henry didn't get the bone saber. Okay. Yeah. It's a bone, it's a bone saber hybrid is the new one. A bit. They have like two piece bats now. I don't know bats, if you've seen yeah. these things. Oh yeah. Um like so the new ones you? the new ones are two piece. <laughs> All right. So listen, you you grew up in Tucson, Arizona. You went to Canyon Del Oro High School, is where you went to high school. Now, I think I've heard this. You you played other sports, right? Besides baseball? Yes. What else did you play? Uh, I played soccer. Soccer was my other big sport. Okay. Now, did you have any offers to do anything with soccer? Or? I had one from okay. like the University of Port, the University of Portland. The that was that. <laughs> Were you? What, what did you their, play? That's their mascot. The University of Portland's the Pilots. What did you play in soccer? Were you a striker? Were you up front, or were you in the middle? Well, I was a midfield. I was a center midfielder until my junior year, and then um, after my sophomore year of high school, I stopped playing like club soccer. Yeah. So. I lost my skills of playing in the middle and didn't feel comfortable playing in the middle. So then the coach moved me to striker, the forward. Yeah. Um, my junior and senior year, I just played forward. So I didn't have as many responsibilities. <laughs> now you ended up going to central Arizona college, which I think you had some other deals, but you ended up going there first. Where, where else were you recruited? Were there anybody that you almost went through right out of high school? No, nope, I was not recruited at all. It was, either central Arizona or Pima community college, which is the Tucson community college there. Those are really my only two choices. Um, and it was a, it was a pretty easy choice for me. Central, you know, has a, has a great baseball history. They had a great coach at the time. His name was Clint Myers. And, um, you know, it was, it was just the baseball spot in Arizona. Really. If you wanted to get better, um, you go to, you go to central Arizona. Okay, so I don't know if a lot of people knew this or not, but Ian, what you were drafted three times. So this is a fun question for me to ask because it's when you're drafted in the rounds you were drafted in it, it's really not not like it's not like New York where you're sitting there waiting to come up and and do that. So in in 2000, out of high school, you were taken by Arizona in the 29th round. 2001, Arizona took you again in the 26th round. And then two years later, Texas ended up, everyone knows that, best 17th round pick ever. Texas took you. Where were you at on all three of those? Do you remember where you were and how you found out you got drafted? Oh, uh, yeah. So the first one, I was in my living room uh, listening to the MLB radio dial-up AOL style. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh with my best friend in high school his name's brian anderson who ended up going in the first round um out of university of arizona right but right, we yeah. thought we thought he was going to get drafted and so we were all huddled around the computer listening to the names getting thrown out um in the first day his name didn't come so he came back over the second day and did the whole thing again and then we just kind of had it on um you know just get kind of listening in the background because it had gone past the point that he thought he was going to get drafted and they called my name in the 29th round it was it was uh pretty bizarre i mean i did a couple <laughs> a couple workouts at, at the high school with some scouts and yeah had a couple guys at the house but nothing you know nothing crazy and then you know the diamondbacks picked me with 29 picks so that was that was uh pretty bizarre um the Real second life. time i got Real drafted life. i don't really remember i don't really <laughs> remember because uh I, when I got drafted out of high school, there was a thing called the draft and follow. Yes. Right. Yeah. Where, 
where there's no negotiation. They, they basically just draft you and keep your rights through the year. And now they have negotiating rights with you before the next draft. Right. right. And that's what they did after my freshman year at Central Arizona is they negotiated with me before that draft and we didn't come to an agreement. So I really wasn't paying attention to the drafts. So I'm like, they're not going to, you know, all of a sudden take me in the fifth round and then offer me way more money than they are. They just negotiated with me. So I really didn't pay attention to that one. Um, and then my junior year, I was at the university of Missouri and I was the guy sitting on the couch thinking I was going to get picked high. Um, and I had a, a teammate named Jeremy Hernandez who lived in California and he was driving from Columbia back home to California. And he said he would give me a ride to Tucson. Um, and I talked him into staying an extra day to listen to the first day of the draft because I swear I was going to get drafted. <laughs> And so we stayed an extra day and I didn't get picked. Um, and he, and then the next day I wanted him to stay again and listen. And he's like, dude, I'm, I'm leaving. You're either staying here and find another ride or you're coming with me. And so I had to get in the car. And so, oh, you know, cell for cell service at that time wasn't great. And right. I just had this little flip phone. Yeah. Um, so we were in the mountains in Northern Arizona driving down into the valley. And, uh, that's when, that's when I got the text message on my phone. In the in the call from the the Rangers saying that they drafted me in the seventeenth round. Who's who's first guy you talked to with the Rangers? After uh, you talked to it, him? it was it was Mike Gross, I believe. Mike okay, Gross okay. was um, the first one to call me, and then I think uh, Grady Fuson called me. Yeah, okay. yeah. What did you sign for? Thirty thousand large. Thirty k large. <laughs> Thirty thousand large. That's yeah. not that's not bad. I mean, hey, it's the it's the best seventeenth round draft pick i've ever seen i mean that, that's that's amazing what you what you've done after that now after this we go into the one time uh, well have, have you been traded more than once or a couple times I, I have been traded twice twice the first one though was from the rangers that was when you found out when you were out of town is that how you found out you were yeah that, on vacation yeah okay so you were on vacation on that we're not gonna get into that we're having fun now okay, okay. Mate, this oh, is, that could be fun yeah, yeah that man. could be fun but <laughs> hey he's back here man he's home all right so this is this is fun for me and because truthfully i was a ranger fan before i ever became a ranger getting into the media so like during the world series and stuff i was up in the stands i went to all the world series games sitting up top i was there when you got your april 3rd right was that your major league debut first hit was all yep. shilling right yeah kurt shilling yeah, to right field, right down. There. Should be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, right. that's right. So let me ask you this. So you made the team out of spring training. I think all of us knew you were going to do that. We were following you. You had done well at, at uh, AAA the year before uh, coming up. How did you find out? When, who told you you were going to be a big leaguer, and how did you find this is, out? This is a good story. I think I know this one. Oh, uh, Jeff, you know this story? I think. Not well enough to tell it verbatim, but I think I think we <laughs> talked about it Yeah, over it, was, the summer. it was pretty crazy. So they had Mark. They had Mark DeRosa in camp to play second base because uh, at the time, you know, I didn't, I didn't have any big league experience. I was still trying to make the team cut my teeth. And so they had veteran guys in camp uh, to kind of push me. And if I didn't perform well, I guess, I don't know, I was kind of Buck's thing. He always had, you know, these competitions going on in, in spring training. Um, I played well. I felt good. Um you know, the year before I was the last cut, I went to the exhibition game with the team in San Francisco and they cut me. Obviously, Soriano was there, mm -hmm. uh, but I, f I felt like I performed really well. I felt like I was ready. I felt like there's an opening at second base. And so we had a uh, spring training game in, in Tucson, actually, my hometown. Um, so I went down to play in that and I started the game because, you know, the veteran guys usually don't didn't make that trip at the time. So I started the game at second. I played really, I think I got two hits, hit a double, um, and then got taken out of the game, I think, in the sixth inning, kind of sat around and, and watched and hung out. Uh, and then after the game, I was just going about my business, you know, getting undressed, getting in the shower, going to see my family to get something to eat. And uh, Don Wakamatsu went looking for me, um, and he poked his head around the corner of the shower and he's like uh kinsler buck wants to see you when you got a chance and immediately my mind was like oh he's gonna tell me if i made the team or not so like i didn't 
I didn't shower off. Like I just ran out of the shower, grabbed a towel, put it around my waist. I saw I'd like soap dripping down my face <laughs> and, and like ran into the office. And I was like, uh, you want to see me? <laughs> and you know, he told me, he sat me down. He's like, what the hell are you doing? Basically. Yeah. Sat me down, looked at me all funny, you know, Buck will always had like these weird looks. Right. <laughs> He just kind of stared at me and I'm sitting there in a towel like, dude, dude what's, what's going on? Yeah. And uh, he said, you got a bunch of family here? And I said, yeah, this is my, you know, that's where I grew up. And he goes, well, you, go have fun tonight because you're, you're the opening day second baseman. Holy and God. I ran out of there as fast as I could. <laughs> I didn't finish my shower. I just top, toweled off with my clothes on and went, went, uh, went out with my family. So it was, it was a pretty cool moment. That's awesome. Oh, that's, that's, awesome. that's every one of us that ever played baseball. Our dream was one day to make a major league debut. So I love those stories. I really like it when people get called up in the middle of the year. Mm. Uh, but I think as a fan, I remember this, Ian, we were expecting you to make the opening day roster as second baseman. We, as fans, that that's what we thought was going to happen. You right. as media probably thought that too. It's kind of like Josh Young this year coming in. You're kind of expecting him to make the team. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay. What were you about to say something? Oh yeah. No, the, yeah, you know, the the, th- the thing that I think, and and you you had mentioned this also over the summer. I think it's important for, pe- for people to hear. You felt you you always had like a chip on your shoulder. You felt oh, yeah. slighted by where you were drafted, and you know things like that. And it just seems like that's what always motivated you, even after you became an all star. Am yeah, I right? I think- I think my dad kind of instill, instilled that style of play in me, first of all, you know, when I was a young kid. And then in high school, I played with, uh, I played with four other, four other major league baseball players was on, were on my high school team. Yeah. So, you know, at the time I was six foot, you know, buck 65 and I was, I was being overlooked. Um, and I, that kind of started to develop my, you know, my chip or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so that, that's where it all started. And, and I always thought that I was better than those guys. I always thought that I could compete with those guys. Um, but I never got the recognition. And then I, you know, like, like we just talked about, I was never recruited out of yeah. high school and all these other guys went to university. I mean, university of Arizona was right in our backyard. We were, a you know, year in year out powerhouse in baseball. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was playing shortstop and hit over 500 my senior year. Didn't get one call from the University of Arizona. Uh, <laughs> didn't get a call from Arizona State out of, out of high school. And besides that, I didn't get a call from anybody. But yeah. all the other guys, like Chris Duncan was a first-round pick. Scott Harrison was a first-round pick. Brian Anderson went to University of Arizona, became a first-round pick. Shelly Duncan was uh, went to University of Arizona and became a first- or second-round pick. Right. Um, so I, that's kind of where it all started. And, and once that's there, and then my college career, the way that it happened, you know, going to junior college first, then transferring to Arizona State and not playing because, because I played bat poorly, um, and then having to transfer again to the University of Missouri, it was, it was like a constant thing, trying yeah. to prove myself. And, and I guess, you know, it showed up in the way that I played on the field. Listen, I got two more for you. We're going to play the home run game, which is a fun game I play with everybody. And then we're going to ask you the question we ask everybody. Yeah. But the home run game is a fun one. You're a guy that's – I hit one home run in my entire life. I know exactly where I was, when I hit it, went over the fence. I mean, I'll never forget it. You've hit a few of them. So I always ask about three home runs. The first one, do you remember the first home run you ever hit over a fence? How old were you and where were you? I don't. Huh. You're like the first one who's never remembered it. I know. You never remembered your first one. That's, he hit so many of them. He hit 270 something in the I, I don't remember, I don't remember my first one, but I do remember getting in the car with my dad driving home and crying because I couldn't hit one and all my friends were hit. <laughs> <laughs> when okay. I was when I was like 11 years old. I know it was, uh I was 11 years old when I hit my first homer over the fence. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, that's good. That's no, good. I know that. I don't remember the first one though. Okay. Now the next one's the most exciting one. Sometimes someone might say one or two of them, but whether it was high school, college, in minor leagues, in the pros, or, you know, the one where it was a walk off or anything like that, what's the most exciting one you remember hitting? Oh, man. That's a tough question. 
I think the the home run that stands out that you know as far as atmosphere goes and just electricity was uh, the homer off Matt Garza in 2010 at the ballpark in Arlington. Um, I think it was a 1-1 game at the time in the seventh, and I hit a two-run home run to make it 3-1 in the seventh. And that place was, you know, in 2010, the ballpark was just electric. Yeah. Um, so the, my, my mind always goes to that home run. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 we mentioned the, I mentioned it earlier, the, the game five homer against Tampa. Yeah, I remember that one too. That, that, that place got so quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that was, that was a fantastic, uh, feeling. That was, was a great home run. But at the time, Cliff was dealing. I mean, it was a little bit of insurance and it felt great. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, Soriano had a great year that year and he was tough to get and I was able to get him. It was, it was just a lot. And, and like the Rangers hadn't won a, you know, postseason sure. series, post-season series at that point. So to hit right. that home run. It was huge, but um, we put them ahead. Uh, just yeah, the atmosphere at the ballpark of that guard's all run yeah. is yeah. what is what I remember. All right. Okay, last one: the bomb, the one that you hit. The moment you hit it, you knew it was gone. And how far do you think it went? <laughs> I know the the I know the one. I mean, you guys probably have no no clue about this one, no. but um, it was against Josh Smith. He was pitching for the. New York Mets in 2008 and Willie Randolph at the time was getting booed and the Mets were bad and it was just a bad situation in New York. Um, and they, they took out a lefty to, and put in Joe Smith to come face me. And the first pitch he hit, he threw me, I hit it over the stadium, like out of the stadium because (laughs) at the time they were doing construction on, on Shea stadium, they were renovating it. And so it went over the bleachers and kind of just disappeared. And that, I mean, that was the, that was probably the first ball I've ever hit in my life. 2008 was the last year of Shea, I think, yeah. because, um, and, and that series, the Saturday game got rained out and they had to play yep. two one, they had to play two one Sunday and I had to change my flight. Oh. I remember yeah. that, Ian, but I don't. I, I yeah, apologize. That's what he I remembers. Do not, I do not all remember his, the home run. All his travel <laughs> woes. He he remembers all of that when he's traveling. Okay, last question. This one has some great answers, and you'll love some of the answers to it. It's what's something that nobody knows about you? Um, uh, we've got uh, John Daniels, who he's been on here twice. He had pl- he had airplane underwear. He wore two pair of underwear. He wore one when he got on a plane, and when he returned home. He had another pair he took with him everywhere. And he said, hey, it's worked. I'm still here. Yeah. We had uh, Jack Leiter, who's in our system now, can't stand peanut butter. Uh, Mike, Michael Young's talked about the clowns, but he actually told us the story of how the whole clown thing started, where, you know, he's not necessarily afraid of clowns. He just doesn't like it. Yeah. Yeah. So what is something that nobody knows about Ian Kinsler? I think people know everything about me. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I pretty much, I pretty much tell everybody what I, what I'm thinking usually. Uh, I don't really hold, hold too much back. Um, what do people not know about me? Hmm. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm trying to think of something like from high school or something. I think, I mean, my first car, I drove this little, uh, this little uh, Honda Civic hatchback, four oh. speed, oh. yeah, no, no radio, and like the air conditioning, <laughs> the air conditioning blew super cold. So that's all I wanted, being in you know Tucson. Yeah. So you you know how to drive a, a, a manual transmission? Yeah. So I learned I learned how to drive a, a stick was my first car. I tell you right now, anybody under the age of twenty five doesn't know how. I've got three kids that are twenty five and younger. They don't know how to drive. A stick they couldn't figure it out yeah if they were getting yeah. murdered and they had to jump in a car and it was a stick they would be gone <laughs> keep it <laughs> keep it the clutch keep killing it keep killing it <laughs> they would be well, they that's would, good a little okay. honda civic hatchback yeah and he drives a stick that you can you and drive you can, a stick i can yes. i can too i grew up driving a stick i'm yes, old sir. though yes sir. i'm old i mean i'm six years younger than you i mean i'm like your uh, okay whole generation so, uh, pretty much though mm-hmm, almost all right well anything else for him no but I'm, I'm looking forward to this new chapter bud it's it's going to be good to see you out at the ballpark on occasion and, absolutely you know, absolutely run into you at, my, at frisco or wherever we might go so looking forward to it 
we'll try to get another one where we'll get in studio sometime and we'll we'll do some lunch, cater a lunch, do that, and just make it a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's Ian Kinsler, Texas Ranger Hall of Famer and new special assistant to the general manager. Ian, thanks so much for coming on, bud. Thanks for having me, guys. Big thanks to Ian Kinsler for coming down. That was a lot of fun. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, first of all, his rooms are really cool. That was neat. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, like Al you know, Kalon, are you kidding he, me? He played with with Mike Trout. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. I'm sure he's had some Mike Trout stuff. He helped out with Do It for Dirt one year. Got his Trout and Pujols, uh, Kinsler and and Justin Upton bats. Uh, it, it was it was really cool. Um, and then you know, Red Sox won the World Series. Yeah. Won the World Series and. Uh, you know, was teammates with Nate Evaldi. And, yeah. And, and so, you know, Mookie Betts and all those guys Man. on that team. So, um, some pretty cool stuff. Detroit Cabrera. You yeah. Know, and we, he showed the Al K line bat, you know, all the greats in, in Tigers history. So, pretty neat, but uh, a good guy. He, yep. he, Ian uh, was, was always really like fair and, and open to me my first year on the beat, you know. So, it was his first year on the beat was that year he was hitting like mad, made the all star team, had the hernia. I put him 10th on my all-star ballot um, or not my all-star ballot, my, my MV, American league MVP ballot. And um, <clears throat> I'm sure today that was before Twitter. I'm sure today I would have gotten blown up for doing it, but he was, <laughs> he was great. Yeah. If you look at what he did until middle of August, it was phenomenal. He's one of the best second basemen to play. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, you look of his, his era, sure. Absolutely. It's <laughs> yeah. great. But you know what? This is down in the bus leagues. Yeah, more second baseman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got to go down in the bus yeah. leagues, talk about it. And I guess what we'll do on this, we'll talk about spring training and who's yeah. going to be there yeah. and who to watch. And, and guys, if you're going to go watch some of these young guys, there's a complex. You go back to that backfield. So there'll be some yeah. games going yeah. on back there. But who yeah. do you want to talk about? Well, uh, to that end, minor league camp. Uh, doesn't start until March 6th, I believe. Right. So uh, now there will be some around working out, uh, no question about it. And then there will be some who are in big league camp. Right. Um, you know, chief among them is Jack Leiter, Kamar Rocker. Uh, I mean, is, is Evan going to Carter? Is Evan he? Carter, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Zach can. I mean, I'm, I'm going to forget the, the list, the guys who are added to the 40 man roster this year. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, even Ornelas. Uh, yeah. Uh, Luis Angel Acuna. Right. A lot of, a lot of guys. And let me tell you, they've got no chance at making the roster. Nope. <laughs> you know, and, and to be perfectly honest, you're, you're, they're probably not going to pitch a lot in Rangers cactus league games. Right. Um, you know, the, the Rangers, I think they're up to 39 or 40 pitchers in camp. So, you know, they, they you know, have they, to look they, at guys uh, that are going to, you know, that's part of Mike, Mike Maddox's job is sorting through who needs the innings. How many do they need? Guys that are when do they want gonna, to build up guys who are going to make the have a chance to make the club right and you know um it's just something weird always happens in spring training you know and and you know uh, i don't remember if you guys know if you guys remember the name mason tobin yes I yeah that you know name. how he how he made <laughs> made the team one year and robbie ross robbie ross was a surprise one year yep. you know there there's always guys that always have to be pitchers but you know, Nick Martinez in, in 2014, because you Darvish got hurt and everybody else was hurt. Tanner Shepard's ended up being the opening day starter, but Nick Martinez, right. Had, you know, didn't make the opening day roster because they called him up, um, later and when it was turned for, time for a start, but that was the first time any of us had ever talked to Nick Martinez. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, weird things can happen, but, um, so don't expect the prospects to play a lot, but when they do play, pay attention to what they do, right. because if they, if, like, if they get into a road game, if they go on the road and let's say, uh, and 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 get into the starting lineup. See how they do because you know that's when the good the good teams early in camp veterans play early. Right. So you're going to see your good pitchers early, and it'll be interesting. It would be interesting to see the, how the hitters do if a if a pitcher does get in early, how he performs against some some guys that are major leaguers, right, and, and, or have been. So it'll be it'll be pretty interesting to see. It always is. Uh, I always enjoy that part of it, seeing how they act in the clubhouse. You know, the rule is be quiet. Yeah, you know, be 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 there early. Don't be late. Things like that. So it, there's kind of a, you know, not not a. I can't think of a damn word. 
but anyway, they they have a protocol they need to follow. Right. And so that that'll be kind of fun. But I'll, I'm interested to see you know Kumar Rocker. I think we all are. Yeah. Uh, interested to see Evan Carter. Um, so you know we'll we'll see what happens. But uh, it, now the be a now good the time. hitters will probably get in some games too. They'll, they'll, because most of your yeah. starters yeah. go about three or four innings. And yeah. They get right. them out of there. Yeah, no, you're right. The pit, the pitchers are the ones that aren't going to get as much time. But the 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 position players do see some more time very late in, in games uh, yep. early on. Well, while someone's jogging in the outfield out there. And right yeah, there. No, they don't do that anymore because they all have the complexes in the fields in the back. So, you know, they just, <laughs> they just go up clubhouse and disappear. So uh, that was great. That's speaking of my, you know, from the first segment, and I wax poetically about spring training. I remember that running in the outfield. Man. It was crazy. Yeah, they would be out there running. You'd see them <laughs> doing all the running and doing all of that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but but spring training, I mean, I, I'm excited to go. I know you're you're ready to get out there. Yeah. It is. It, it's uh, my Kathy and I went for the first time uh, the year of COVID. Actually, okay. 2020. That's when we all sat together oh, yeah, at Booties yeah, yeah. and right, uh, right. got to know each other even better. Um, and and do all of that. But I, I've loved it ever since. I uh, got to go back last year. You and I were out there for yeah. a week. Um, can't wait to get out there this year. Minor leaguers are going to be out there. Guys, this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, out it's there. baseball season. It is baseball season. Now, next week, he's going to be in Arizona. I may be here in the studio. We'll figure out how we're going to make this yeah. work. But we got to be covering the, We got to be covering spring training. Oh, yeah. So we're going to get that done and go from there. And But uh, it, we will have a show no matter what. Yeah, and and look, guys, Rangers Today is not going anywhere. You right. Know, Rangers Today, five ninety nine a month, 35 for six, $60 for the whole year. Right. Uh, and that gets you, that's 12 months. It's not like from now to the end of the end of the season or the end of the year. It's right. 12 months right. of, of, of Rangers coverage. And, you know, I mentioned TR's deal when we were talking, Man, to, that's Ian, so talking good. to Ian and, you know, we're going to have a lot of stories and content from out there. So, uh, a lot of now's access. The time, now's the time to subscribe. You know, there's a lot of optimism in, in, in this and there, there it, it actually, there's reason to be optimistic. Absolutely. I think. So, Get your subscription so you don't miss anything. Absolutely, guys. Hey, hit that subscribe button down there for the YouTube channel. Yeah, like us and share yep. us and all that jazz. And if you need some real estate needs, whether you're a property man where you need property management, you want to buy or sell real estate, whatever, go to SWDallasRealty.com. Premier Properties, your sponsor for spring training. Thanks again to them. Guys, until next time, and we literally will see you at the yard. Roxo Media House.